So we're going to do some spicy takes. We're going to be uh, giving our predictions of productivity apps in the future. I'm with Tiago Forte, the writer of the Second Brain book, which is uh, available now in the description below. Let's dive in. Let's do it. Let's. Uh, so your first spicy prediction, what is it? So my first prediction is this idea that there's ever going to be one app to do everything is so misguided. In fact, over the next few years, I think we're going to use more and more and more different, ever more specialized apps to the point that the average person, the average knowledge worker will use dozens. Yeah? Yeah. At any given time, they'll have one or two or three dozen different super specialized productivity apps, which means they all need to be connected, they need to be integrated, they need to be oh kind of God. put into some bigger system. I would give that a 35% rating. <laughs> <laughs> So low, so low, low confidence. Low confidence. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm because I'm I hope that we just use less and they get better. Mm. But I know what you mean. I do know what you mean because it, it, it's getting so noisy, right? But I just think because machine learning will come into play, mm -hmm. that might derail some of those other smaller apps. Maybe. Maybe. Could be. Yeah. What how highly do you think that's gonna happen? I'm pretty confident. Hundred? Never a hundred, but <laughs> I might give myself sixty-five. Sixty-five, okay, 65 that's good. Sixty-five or seventy. Get on. <laughs> I think I think many of them will be invisible. Many yeah. of them will be in the background. Many of them will be automated. Many of yeah. them you won't even know you're using. They'll be like sub components of something else. Yeah. To me, it's it's just a performance thing. Like yeah. as our professions get ever more leveraged and ever more specialized, hmm. what happens with specialization? You use the even more precise tool for the job. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Maybe it'll change. Okay, 40. <laughs> <laughs> you changed my mind on that last bit. My spicy take is Mem will become the next Evernote. Same word. So I think that Evernote's at this point where it's, you know, sort of going like this. And Mem, it reminds me a lot of how Evernote started. And they've got the abilities of Roman Obsidian that appeal to the sort of more in-depth market of note-taking, but they've got the ease of use that Evernote had at the start. Mm -hmm. So I think that is perfectly positioned to take over mm -hmm. that spot. Uh, I'm not super familiar with Mem, so I can't really uh, give my own confidence rating much confidence. <laughs> but given you... Actually, based... Your confidence in making that prediction is very <laughs> disturbing to me. Because you have so much experience with so many different apps, like I don't think you would make such a prediction lightly. Yeah. So actually, I give it a high rating based on that. I'd say like seventy. Oh wow! Oh, that's decent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just because if it goes wrong, my your I'm career going, your career is over. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. What's your next spicy take then? My next spicy take is I think Evernote is going to be the next Evernote. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's yes. coming back. <laughs> They're coming back. They have been slow and steady. They mm -hmm. took the time to go right back to their roots. They completely re-architected their code base from scratch practically. It's yeah. taken years. Yeah. But I think people are honestly tired. In contradiction to what I just said previously, people are so tired of the noise, the constant churning and, ch and amount of change, yeah. the constant choice overload of having to decide what to use this year, that they're going to flock and mass back to Evernote. Yeah? Yeah. And it's become like the, the dawn again. It's going to be like a retro thing, like an yeah. old school, like the same way that 80s fashion is coming back. Yeah. Evernote usage will also return. Oh my God. That's going to be so cool. Can we get <laughs> Phil back as well? Um, no. Can he I come think back? Phil's having too much fun in his new ventures. So. <laughs> <Damn. laughs> okay. Um. If I was asked very... Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would definitely... I, I would give that a... 60%. Really? Cause, yeah, because I, th I think you're right. Like, they have been doing some big stuff in the background. Mm -hmm. But if they can leapfrog, mm -hmm. that would be nice. Like, if they went into their machine learning, I reckon that could be quite cool. Mm. But I don't know in its current state. <laughs> yeah. They would have to basically market it as a return. You know, the yeah. same way that people once in a while go, oh, I just went back to paper. Yeah. And now I just like writing notes on paper. I'm back this will be the digital version of that. Like, <laughs> oh, I just went back to what I was using 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> My next one is pretty bold. Mm -hmm. Notion will lose in the next three years. 
Damn. <laughs> if they don't get themselves sorted structurally with their app. Same more. So I think that for for teams, maybe not so much for personal use, the template thing will get in the way mm-hmm. of their future plans mm-hmm. because you're reliant so much on the manualization mm-hmm. of using Evan, um, using Notion and mm-hmm. setting it up mm-hmm. that it it will stunt you in the future, mm. especially when the sort of machine learning aspect comes in mm-hmm. to productivity. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think more structured workflow setups, like apps like there's a newer app called Catalog, which mm. I think does what Notion could do. Mm. And that's the only reason I compare it as the next mm. thing, mm. because it's doing what they should be doing. What do you think? I actually tend to agree. I guess this is not very controversial if we just agree with each other. But... <laughs> We're, we're we're both so persuasive. Yeah, you know, we're right. like, gosh, I yeah. think you're right. <laughs> um, what makes me kind of agree with that is, I think in the long run, the lowest friction, lowest energy, basically mm. the path of least resistance always wins. Yeah, it is just it, it is almost like physics, mm. right? Properties of energy and matter dictate that the it's like water flowing downhill. It yeah. will not because it has a goal, but just in its nature is to find mm. the you know the steepest path. And Notion is just a lot of work. And I, I almost think like every bit of energy you spend on note taking or knowledge management or saving files or organizing data is energy that is not going into the final product, mm, into the yeah. actual final delivery. Yeah. And I, I think over time, like it's been novel and it's been new. So people have been willing to kind of play with it. It's been basically a game. Yeah. It's been like entertainment. Yeah. But when it gets to be boring and, and something that people just want to get done, it's going to be too friction friction frictive full of friction yeah yeah i agree well i could definitely agree <laughs> what rate are you gonna give me though uh what did you say what was yours uh what the notion one yeah wait i give a rating because mine can't be higher than your own rating <laughs> my own rating is a hundred percent no 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 it's uh, a 75 i give myself a 75 rating i think that. i'd give it a 65 oh that's good yeah <laughs> They have a lot of momentum, so I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, <laughs> what's your What's your final spicy take? My third and final spicy take is this new generation of what are sometimes called graph-based or link-based apps, mm-hmm. namely Rome, Obsidian, and Logseek are the most prominent, is way is much further away from any kind of mainstream adoption than any of us realize. Those of us that are immersed in productivity content 24 seven feel like it's imminent, like it's, mm-hmm. it's happening. It's not no, virtually no one has heard of these apps. And I think that they're, they're at least 10, 10 or more years away from mainstream adoption. I'm going to give it, this is one I'm going to go completely again, <laughs> like 15%. <laughs> nice. Nice. I understand what you mean, but I think because Like, think of auto-bi-directional links. Mm -hmm. Things are automatically Mm self-set up. I think that will just replace it completely. Mm -hmm. And then what, like in five years, it might... People doing that might be like, might be like, oh, that's sort of pointless, maybe. Mm -hmm. Because I want to say something like a bit. I always see those apps of hobbyist apps. Yeah. That's sort of like my pitch on it. They're hobbies, yeah. Yeah. So... We might get big apps with like AI that make sense with that, hmm. like these third brain apps. Mm. <laughs> but I don't know. I think, I think they're reserved for a chosen few. I think so. Oh, so you don't think they're going to go mainstream at all? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's only fifteen percent. Oh, you're even more conservative than me on that. Yeah, I don't think they're going to go mainstream. I, I, I do think by the time they go mainstream, if they go mainstream, they're going to be completely unrecognizable. Yeah. Like right now we're in the early state. We're in the development stage of that technology. Yeah. It's the maybe, error prone. Yeah. It's manual. It's expensive. It's not very reliable. Yeah. We're like the four, not even the Model T, but like whatever came before the Model T. <laughs> and it's, it has just a long ways to go. I, I just think of normal people. People yeah. that don't have productivity as their hobby. Mm. What the, the leap it's going to take to make that user friendly enough that it's just a normal part of everyone's or most people's everyday lives is just very far away. Yeah. If ever. Yeah, definitely. This is crazy from our last video that we did. As in like a few years ago, we were like talking about like Notion. And now we're like, 10 <laughs> years time. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, my final one is... 
that I believe task apps themselves, if they don't evolve, will probably suffer to planner apps. Mm. So I think that like Todoist, Tick Tick, which are all really dominant to do apps, mm. they will probably start losing a lot of their user base mm -hmm. to apps like Motion, Akiflow, Sansama, which are like planner apps. Never heard of any of those. Because <laughs> like I think you just made up those words. Come on. <laughs> Notion, motion. <laughs> yeah, you're just you're just messing with us. Just here. adding it. <laughs> but like, because like a to-do list typically is just like a list, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And maybe you can organize it in a board. Mm -hmm. But what I mean is there's no like surprisingly there's no like day planning orientation around it there's no like hand holding to plan a day mm. effectively mm. and that's what to-do list apps need to do mm. but they're like they should do that right away mm. so that's my prediction i think that they will probably suffer quite bad essentially because they're not kind of integrating into people's schedules yeah but they're not even they're not necessarily trying to even help some plan some plan a day they're just static. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, hmm. hmm. I, don't, I don't have that strong of an opinion, but I'd say 30%. 30%? Okay. Yeah, 30% chance that that happens. I'm happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> that was good fun, Tiago. Yeah, really fun. Thank you. You can watch more of Tiago's content on his YouTube channel. Um, you can check it out in the link in the description and check out the brand new Second Brain book, which is out now.